a new moon is in the sky, a 23-inch metal sphere placed in orbit by a Russian rocket. The reaction was one of astonishment and concern, for it was now known that a potential enemy was at least temporarily ahead in developing means for space travel. President Eisenhower reassures the nation that Russia's success with the first satellite does not indicate a serious lag in American rocket research. The morning of November 8, 1957, at Huntsville, Alabama. A sudden meeting has been called by General John B. Medeiros, commanding general of the Army Ballistic Missile Agency. I promised the Secretary of the Army that we would be ready in 90 days or less. All at once, Americans were interested in the oncoming age of space. And with the curiosity came a mounting, swelling demand to get a satellite into the air on the double. But there were disappointments. Another setback for the United States. A loss of thrust and fall back to Earth in a split second. But meanwhile, far across the country at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, a sprawling 80-acre research and development complex in Pasadena, California, scientists and engineers were racing toward the same deadline, 90 days to put a satellite into orbit. The Army is requesting the Jet Propulsion Laboratory to provide the following programs. First, the additional high-speed propulsion systems required. Second, the orbiting missile or satellite. And third, the necessary instrumentation to record and transmit the scientific data assigned to this experiment. This assembly, which is the actual payload for the satellite, contains both transmitters, the necessary circuits for the impact microphone, which will detect the collisions with meteorite particles, and a Geiger counter to measure cosmic ray intensity. At Cape Canaveral, Florida, the Army's Jupiter-C rocket is ready for America's second attempt to launch a space satellite. The hours-long countdown approaches zero, a moment of enormous tension, for every missile launching is still an experiment. Any one of tens of thousands of things can go wrong with catastrophic results. But all that can be done to assure perfection has been done. The moment is at hand. The countdown reaches zero. Some three minutes later, Explorer is in orbit, broadcasting to the world its coded scientific data. This close-up of the United States edition of Sputnik was made at a press conference with leaders of the scientific teams. Dr. Werner von Braun, Dr. James Van Allen, and Dr. William Pickering. A three-way collaboration between private industry, academic science, and the military. Cosmic ray intensity, meteor impact, solar radiation. These are the dry facts that will help carry a man ever farther into the age of space.